Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to another uh, Titanovix deck tech video. I've uh, laid everything out here, so um, it is all nice and uh, organized in some neat piles here. But um, I'm just going to go over like a kind of a, just a brief look through here, kind of kind of what we're looking for, and um, just like kind of like a bigger. You can kind of see what kind of curve we are kind of going with here. So lots of zero and one drops. A good amount of twos, um, just kind of an average for threes, and then um, like a probably like a slight tinkering off, like in our um, our fours and fives, and then like kind of an explosion into uh, um, our six and nines. And um, the commander we'll be playing today is um, Mary of the Scholar of Antiquity. So I'll just go ahead and get the uh, camera down here, and then I'll get each pile um, one by one, kind of kind of just kind of go over it like exactly what's happening here um, in my rationale. So this com this commander is um, a three mana cost commander, one colorless, one red, one green, legendary creature, elf artificer. Uh, she taps an untapped non-token artifact for that we control for adding a green. Tap two untapped non-token artifacts you control, I exile the top card of your library, may play this it, play it this turn. Um, so this can turn um, all our like cheap artifacts into mana producers. Um, that are non-tokens. You cannot tap like treasures. Um, you can't like tap like, um, I guess like, uh, I guess the example would be like constructs that are tokens. You can't tap those for mana. They have to be like, um, you know, just your regular permanents. Like for instance, like a rabbit battery, you could tap that for mana. Any of our non-token artifacts you can tap for mana. <coughs> Excuse me. In addition, <coughs> we can also tap uh, to untap non-token artifacts we control, we'll exile the top card of our library, you may play it this turn. So that entails just basically doing the same kind of thing as instead of tapping for mana, you just tap them um, to the non-tokens and you can to exile, you basically put that um, top card of your library into an exile zone where you would have to play that turn or it'd go away. So um, very cool commander here. I would say we're gonna be using it mostly for its adding um, capabilities adding mana so that's nice so without further ado let's um, just kind of get started um, I'll kind of give my brief kind of overview of like how I believe these kind of cards operate um, I think Maria really likes um, coming down and having ideally um, about three artifacts to tap and um, that would let you play um, you know your three drops um, the turn she comes down and, and accelerate through that way get your very strong three drops um, get your board state in a very um, powerful position um, and overtake your opponent from there um, with just basically your board presence. So um, how do we accomplish this? Well, um, we first can start off by just kind of like detailing our um, our zero drops. So we have the um, Ornithopter here. We really like this coin because it's an O2, has nice stats, it flies, so we can equip things on it like Pry and Blade, things that... Um, you know, can help it get in and get us value. The Ornithopter is a very nice choice. Um, I'd say that basically we're playing all the nice zero drop heroes that are creatures. Memnite, it's a one one artifact creature construct and another zero mana creature here, the Phyrexian Walker. So it has a nice stats too, it doesn't fly, but O3 bodies, nice. And we can also tap it for mana, of course. And then just another fine choice is the Mox Amber. Not a creature, but works very well with uh, Maria to kind of fix um, any mana that we might need it if we need to produce reds, as that does happen um, at times. And additionally, um, it works also well with Ragavan. <clears throat> okay. So, um, we will be playing um, some fast mana in here. We're not going to be playing um, like um, Mana Crypt or Jewel Lotus. Um, I could foresee those cards. Um, you know, kind of going in this deck, including like, um, uh, what would you say? Uh, it's called um, Balan's Tomb now. Um, basically the uh, ancient tomb, the, the land that produces two colors. Um, we could definitely soup the deck. We can find the mana crypts. We can find the ancient tombs. Uh, we can find the jeweled lotuses in here. You know, we could even find the mana bolts. Um, we could find all that kind of fast mana um, and it would be very fine in this deck because we do play an abundance of two drops that are colorless. So we could definitely accelerate that way. That would definitely um, make the deck more competitive. We could even add wheels at that point. 
So um, definitely have some some power ranges in here. This is like definitely kind of like just the, um, you know, kind of your casual, maybe a little high powered, a little more high powered than normal, just because I've really worked with the list a lot and um, kind of found out what makes Maria sing the most. So uh, here we go. So these are just kind of like our, our slew of, um, you know, fast mana cards here. I would say we have like our, just our run of the mill um, elf, bird, Ragavan, um, Halfling, and Soul Ring. So it's just really solid, just like a five, five, um, you know, one drops that kind of will accelerate us that way. And then we just have like some really sweet one drops, like just the whole, whole mess of really nice ones. Um, Prime Blade is just a nice uh, one colorless. It just it acts as like that, that mana rock for, um, it's easy to cast with Maria and just kind of storm off with. Um, also can kind of get our treasure production going, which we like. Um, Hope of Giraper, a, a very nice one mana flyer here. We can also use it to maybe delay like a Gandalf um, that we're playing against, you know, for a turn, which would be fine too if we need to finish off a different, you know, that opponent in a particular way, maybe sooner than later, maybe delay them from wiping the board. Hope a Giraper could get that done for us. Shriekhorn, just um, we're doing like a Greyguard Matters deck, so um, the Shriekhorn is going to satisfy that criteria, it's gonna um, help us mill cards into our library, and it'll also act as a mana rock, so um, it works very well with Maria. I love this card, I love this deck. I've been, I worked on this the most. Uh, Shadow Spear um, is just a very fine card. It gives you a uh, kind of lifelink, it can get your um, your creatures to get in there. It can also take um, indestructibility off so some of those more problematic artifacts, like the One Ring. Um, it can take indestructibility off for the turn, and we can, we can deal with it that way. Haywire Might just gets through all that stuff anyways. It just exiles an artifact um, with its inability. It's like perfect for Maria. Um, just a very car fine card here at the top, since I divining top. It will help us just kind of sift through our library and also um, keep drawing, which is nice. Great. Right. We have um, Commander's Plate here. This is just an awesome card with Maria. Of course, you can see like these are just the quality of these cards are just extreme. And um, the step from like playing on, you know, um, you know, MTG Arena to to being able to just to play a casual game of Commander of the Gulf is is extreme actually. Um, just like with some of the cards like Sensei's Divining Top, Commander's Plate, Soul Ring, it just it's just another step. So um, we do have the cards to kind of match with that to keep you know improving the power level so we can play and have fun at the LGS. Here's a rapid battery. This will just, um, it's just a fine one drop for us and it can also be equipped um, for red. Um, we can tap it for mana if we'd like to. Um, we can just do all sorts of fun things with this uh, equipment and the haste is very nice if we need it. And then Goblin Welder. So this is just one of those Uber cards that have some crazy artifact synergy and we're gonna be able to exchange our uh, artifacts for, for bigger artifacts that we have. So that is our zeros and ones. <clears throat> Okay, so now we're gonna get into our twos. Um, now, um, there is a new artifact that is an Exelon dousing device. I'd honestly consider it um, over Lightning Grease because we like meet that criteria of like turning it into an, to an a land pretty pretty easily. And that works so well with like our Goblin Engineer and um, uh, our Goblin, um, well, basically specifically our Goblin Engineer um, because the Goblin Engineer requires red to, um, to use its ability and just that extra kind of mana helps. So I do like Lightning Grease, but we play so many equipments and like we do want to equip things onto, you know, Maria and our other creatures. So I could totally see Dowsing Device going in here over Lightning Grease. I know this might sound a little crazy, but we do play Boots too. So, you know, I'm not, I wouldn't be too sad about that. <clears throat> Here's Price Statue. You could consider like Arcane Signet or Price Statue. I just like it because of like, the sacrifice capabilities. Um, I think it kind of gets us a little, a little extra like push um, over like an arcane signet. I can consider both though, but I do like the price statue here, especially if we have um, sacrifice synergy with um, you know to sacrifice treasures and so forth. Swift Fubu is just a sweet card. Gets us some haste. It's just a, such a threatening card, and just can get on our monsters and start swinging. Smuggler's Copter, this is just another sweet card that helps us kind of loot into the to the graveyard. It has our Graveyard Matters vibes. Goblin Engineer just fits that bill too. Um, Howling Mine just draws a lot of cards. It just uh, does all that thing that you want to do with Marion, just keep, keeps that value going. 
mesmeric orb is going to fill our graveyard with a ton of permanence. It's going to be great for us. Mask of Memory, that's just another similar thing. We're just looting cards into the graveyard and also yeah, I think these all act as mana rocks. Scrapwork Mutt, just another fantastic card that uh, helps us loot into the to the graveyard, gives us the body and also some earth value too if we need to use it again later in the game. Ruby Medallion and Emerald Medallion. I'm just... Oh my god, these cards are so good for us, and uh, we play a lot of red spells, we play a lot of green spells, and they also act as mana rocks and cost reducers, so they're, they're, just, the, they're just the end all, be all, what can I say? And then we have um, Shatter Skull Smash in there. Alright, so we rounded out our zero ones and twos, and we're going to get into our threes here. We got some sweet ones. Uh, we got our swords here, so the Swords of Fire Ice, Sword of Forge and Frontier, these are just value engines, they're just... Help us draw cards and get through our library. They're just, they're just fantastic. They also help to equip themselves when we tap with Maria. And Dural is another sweet one that will kind of get our commander going. It'll get our board built up too when we start swinging with them, uh, whoever's equipped with this thing. So that's kind of nice too. It'll kind of make some spirits. So it has some synergy with our finishers. So those are, our, those are like our equipment swords there. Um, additionally, we have Silvala, just because Silvala is just a house and just loves big nasty creatures and we can just go ahead and make a ton of mana with her she's such a threat too she can also bait like removal too if we're like afraid about losing Mary or not on curve um very good for one for one one v one formats you can just pay, kind of basically bait this one out and um then we can kind of kind of move from there and get mary out safely and start getting our value we need Augur autumn Keeps our gas going, keeps our lands going, does all those things that we needed to do. Now, um, I, I want to make a little point here because I think it's very important. Now, Maria, she really, we, we really put in all those like zeros and ones um, because, like I said, we want to have that abundance of artifacts. So when we cast Maria, we have a better chance of casting like a, a three mana spell. So, um, for instance, like these are just fantastic hits. These are all like. Maria will produce all those three mana, um, three forest colors with three um, non-token artifacts. So you can see we're hitting the criteria for all these. We have some really nice hits. And these are all fantastic. I'd say if you're able to kind of hit that sequence, even if you're on the play, one for, like in a 1v1 format, like Arena, um, you're just going to be getting all that, all that action. And, and I, I do play basically a much similar deck to this on Arena. And you can see these are all like, you know, historic brawl, legal cards. I'm not playing anything like that's out of this world yet. Um, some of the goblins I showed earlier and some of the one mana cards can be interchanged for, um, you know, like two mana rocks, like the Iron Crag and, and um, Arcane Signet and some of the other one drops or some other just, you know, decent one drop colorless artifacts that you can just kind of swap out but this is kind of the ideal is just to basically be able to play one of these you know in that manner um when you get mary onto the board on turn turn uh, turn three turn two um have those abundance of artifacts ready and then uh, you're going to be able to cast these um in a very simple way so now we do include some some three drops that have red in it and um you know, obviously we, they might be really sad, you know, we might have that, that really nice start and, you know, but they're worth it, right? So, um, Trash for Treasure is like just a very key card for us. It's going to like get our beefy artifacts out into the battlefield just by like exchanging, like for instance, a treasure. It's just so strong. And then, um, Fable of the Mirror Breaker which will help do so much. It will help us, it will get us a shaman that can create treasures, um, you know, could ramp us a little bit that way. Uh, we can also um, loot into our graveyard with chapter two, and then we get the the, the Kiki Jiki Shaman, which can just copy our non-tokens. So it's just like, you know, just a wild card, right? So um, we're not gonna be sad about putting those two red three drops in our deck either. Um, additionally, we're gonna have some, um, now that we've gotten through the three drops, let's go through the fours. And um, we have some very fine cards here. So the first one is the Doretti, the Scrap Servant. This is the one where um, for the plus two can do discard up to two cards and you draw that many cards. That could be very key for us. And also the minus two could just be very key. It just, this card just does everything we want it to do. So we like the Doretti a lot. All right, let's keep going. 
Um, we have the blossoming tortoise here, so that's nice also. So um, just another cool uh, creature card that like loots lands into our library or our graveyard um, and also other relevant things that we can kind of get back for value. So we love the blossoming tortoise. Uh, Oracle Moldaya, um, no specific like artifact synergy here. Um, it is a creature, so we do have some creature synergy, but basically what the Oracle thing, Oracle does is it just basically gets through our gas. Like it helps us put like lands onto the battlefield that are on our library. <coughs> so we can get to the more relevant things, building mana, getting to our stronger cards. That's really what Oracle does. And I think it's, for me, it, it lasts. It's, it's the card for green for me. I think at this point, I think Silvala is kind of really growing on me too, but um, Oracle of Moldiah will always have that spot in my green decks. It's just, just so good. Here's the One Ring. Um, it's so much better when it's not nerfed. Like on the Historical Brawl, you have to pay one to draw with it now. It's just so much worse. Um, this is just an insane card. You can get that protection. You can start drawing like so many cards with it. Um, and you don't have to invest any mana until you just tap it. So it does a little damage to you, but it's just so good. Eska's Chariot, just another sweet card. It builds our board. It has a ability to copy tokens too, like treasures and cats, whatever you've got. So those are our four drops. All right, so now we're going to get into our fives. Um, we have the uh, Scrap Master here, which is very nice. Um, it's just going to like... You know, we can have that resiliency if like things go to zero, perhaps we still have our graveyard, maybe we can cast a scrap mastery, um, get our, uh, you know, put all, we can get all those, um, get all those cards in our graveyard that are artifacts and put them back on the battlefield. That's nice, right? So that's scrap mastery. Sky Sovereign, just one of my favorite vehicle cards. It's in my Grease Fang deck, it's in my Maria deck. Just a fantastic card, a cool reanimator target. Uh, it does some really nice damage too when it comes onto the battlefield and attacks, so it's just really sweet. I love it. Doors of Durin is the most powerful card in my deck. I'm just gonna say it. This card is absolutely insane. Um, it's it's like it's like a legacy card, and I'm totally serious. Like I just want you to imagine the sequence, okay? Here it is, right? All right, so we get, um, we have our board. We go ahead and play Doors of Durin. We have like two people that can swing. We have two, two, two creatures. So even if one of them gets removed, we're gonna still be able to trigger the doors. All right, so um, we are gonna go ahead and swing with like Maria and someone else, or maybe one of our Ornithopters or our Hope of uh, And this is, this is what happens. This is the sequence we get. Are you ready? And this is not Magical Christmas Land. This could totally happen. This is what happens now. We go ahead and uh, scry, and we see that the two creatures on top uh, are an Enrace Forerunner and an Itali. So uh, we're in good shape here. Now, now here's the cool thing: um, we're gonna go for the Itali, and you know what? Since we're gonna scry too, we're gonna actually keep the uh, Enraiser right, right, right below it. Okay. So that when we reveal the card and go ahead and it's tapped and attacking, Italia will be tapped and attacking. It will trigger. Simultaneously, we'll be able to cast from our opponent's great, um, libraries. And additionally from ours, the Enrace Forerunners will also be cast at this point too. Everything that we're attacking with is going to get buffed. Um, they're going to be super strong. Where the value is just like outrageous. So... This can be a sequence. This is like, this is what we're talking about. This is why this, this deck is exciting. So, um, yeah, we could just have some, some pretty, pretty fast kills here, you know, for some opponents. They can just be out by turn five. Um, you know, maybe sooner if we, um, you know, if we ramp into the, the doors, it could be like a turn four kill. So, wow. So Doors of Durin is just my, just, ooh, so good. Such a good card. Oh, Vorinclex, just another sweet card. We, I love how we can sink man into this. Um, you know, get to our finishers, get to our crater hooks, get to our Enraiser, Enraiser Forerunners. Um, this um, will flip from the eight mana, and then we can get um, those two of those cards that were, that were milled from the 10. If they're creatures, we can put them on the battlefield. So we don't want to whiff. We're not going to whiff very often. We have enough creatures in here. We're going to get some nice value from that.
All right. So, I mean, I feel like those five drops, they feel like they're almost talking about just like mega bombs, but there only are five drops. So, I mean, this just keeps going like, um, I suppose we could just get into our six drops real quick here. Um, Warm Coil Engine, just a fantastic artifact. Gruff Triplis, this is from the um, Eldraine set. New card alert. So um, we're looking for the dousing device and gruff triplets. Those are kind of our newer um, cards. So uh, dousing device from the Lost Caverns Exelon and um, gruff triplets from the um, new L Drain set. I love gruff triplets. I think it's a fantastic six drop. It, it builds, it gives us a couple tokens. And um, whenever one of those dies, we get to put that power on another gruff triplet. Has a lot of synergy with our token building, um, our enter the battlefield creatures. It's just, it's just right where we want it to be. Steel Hellkite's a nice removal here. Also a nice reanimator target. Rishkar's Expertise, just that, that, that fantastic six drop um, that we're gonna get additional value by not only drawing cards, but being able to cast another five mana card um, from our hand once we draw those cards upon that's resolving. So it's fantastic. Then we have our Ancient Copper Dragon. So, all right, very cool. So that's our six drops, of course. To mention about this card, okay, it just builds a lot of treasures. It's like 60 bucks, just to let you know. <laughs> it's probably still at 60 bucks, right? I think it is. And um, yeah, 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 yeah. So here's our sevens. We got a tally. We kind of just went over that kind of that sequence with the tally does. It's just extremely strong. Meteor column for nice removal. We just love this one. It's a perfect really really you know got me like hooked onto mary like really just hooked and sinker because this card was just like it's like a mini cityscape leveler it's not as like strong as a cityscape leveler but it just does the trick it's like kind of exactly what he wanted to do it's just more redundancy for removal god pharaoh's gift this is just like another seven drop so this is the formula for maria and um i I, I just want to make it simple for you. So like if you do pursue it, maybe you'll enjoy it more. Maybe you'll have a better time like um, kind of brewing your, your experience with her. But it's it's basically like um, an abundance of zero and ones. So you want to have a good amount of zero and ones. Um, and then catering to that three drop, those nice three drops like your swords. Um, and then those cards that are going to give you some extra value like Savala, Agara, Autumn. So basically zero ones, threes. And then sevens, because if you kind of do that math, right, if you're basically hitting all your land drops, um, you're basically be able to kind of get close to exhausting your hand um, by the time you um, are coming on like turn three, turn four. And um, if you do hit that sequence, like for instance, um, you know, three lands, three artifacts, Maria, and then Maria into that one of those colorless artifacts, that's basically you're kind of dealing with like seven mana there. So it's basically zeros, ones, threes, and seven, seven pluses, you know, seven cost and plus, uh, and, and more mana cards. That's kind of your bread and butter. So you can definitely play, like you can see, we play like a lot of, um, you know, we play a lot of these seven drops. So, you know, we have an abundance of sixes and, uh, sixes as well but we have a plenty of sevens here you know that's a like pretty much a lot of bombs right so one two three four five six about six of those plus we have the um you know from moving there we do have we go into our eights as well so we have our um end race forerunners crater hoof let's zoom back in and then Cityscape Leveler, the Great Henge. We'll be playing that for less, but it's, you know, it is what it is. Portal for XP and Chisgoria. Um, Chisgoria is definitely like my more budget friendly. I think you could even play like an Emrakul, the Promised End, because you're putting so many cards in your graveyard. It's just like a mega body you could, but I, I like to, I wanna try Chisgoria. I wanna really give this a go because I feel it's gonna be really great at, you know, getting to our um, higher cost artifacts and just keeping that gas going. I just think it's gonna be like really nice for us. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much the deck right there. So I appreciate you guys all staying around. Some of the techie lands that we you know we're playing in here, we have uh, Mycosynth Gardens. That's one a really fun one where you can copy artifacts. That one's really cool. 
I really like it for this deck. Um, you could also, whatever you um, turn the Mycosynth in, you could still tap it for mana, which is kind of interesting too. Um, because you are copying, you're not making a token, you're just, you're, you're basically keeping it in a non-token range. So that's kind of interesting. And um, of course, Urza Saga is just another fantastic card. So not the most budgety deck um, at all. In fact, um, this deck is like kind of on the pricier side, I would say, of, mo of the decks I do have. I think it's like an $800 deck range. So I will definitely post a list and, um, I hope you enjoy the video, everybody, and uh, feel free to leave a comment, subscribe, leave a like. I really appreciate all the views. Um, I don't know, like, I guess you guys like these videos, so at least like to click on them. Maybe the thumbnail is fun, at least. So, uh, yeah, this was, uh, this was really nice, and I hope you all have a great weekend. Goodbye.